Okay, so we can start with the uh, first tutorial. Let me just share my screen. Yeah, you can see it, right? So on today's tutorial, we're gonna talk about, about asynchronous programming, similarly, and how we can use these functionalities on the Redash um, project that you are, you are guys are doing. So, for those of you who, are, who have experience with web to development, I'm sure you're already familiar with what does asynchronous does, but we're gonna talk about this asynchronous. So uh, we'll see the difference between synchronous and asynchronous to understand it much better. So the asynchronous programming uh, is a paradigm that allows unblocking operations. So the traditional way of uh, doing programming uh, is like the duck workflow. It expects one function to end and the next will continue in the next continue like that, like it follows that kind of process, uh, which is not the most advisable thing to do when you have when you are building applications that will be used by many users across the across the world. So one user will not accept um, ex wait for another user to finish their whatever they're doing to access your application. The right way is every user should be able to access your application if they want at the same time. The application should be able to address every user request uh, as, as it comes. It doesn't have to put them in a queue to answer a question of a user when accessing your application. So that is the purpose of asynchronous. Asynchronous will give you that method to do that to make sure your api calls your every functionality you are implementing on your application is working asynchronously without waiting for the others as a response as a execution to finish you can invoke another one you can invoke another one and you can invoke another one so that is a general concept behind asynchronous programming well the synchronous is the opposite so the advantage would be in unblocking operations. There was there won't, won't be any block operations. So non-blocking operation improved performance, of course, uh, enhanced responsiveness. The real world application, web servers, data fetching, real-time data processing, they all use this uh, functionality behind the scene. They have a synchronous handling mechanism of requests. So let's see with an example what does asynchronous look like. So there's a function. Okay, there's a function here, as you can see. Uh, there, so sim simply the function is printing a data. There will be a time delay just to see uh, the difference. So I'm calling this function twice. I'm just calling the first function to be executed after three seconds, and the second, this same function, is the second time to display to be uh, to print out the message after two seconds. So Let's say there are two users who are calling this function at the same time, but the delay for the execution is different for both. So how will the first part, the first user that requested that call this function, the function, the print will happen after three seconds. So based on synchronous, the first function will be served. So if you can see the output here, for the first user call but the output will happen after three seconds and the second for the second to be to get the output it has to wait for the three seconds before the second one get the output so you can see it here 
the first when the first this function is called for the first time by with three second delay function to has to wait until this the first function has ended so it, it wait for three minutes then the second function will be invoked and that will wait for two seconds to invoke its output so this just will create a lot of you can see is running it it's waiting for the first function to end then the second function call will be executed so this is just a traditional way of doing calling functionalities before asynchronous concept came so this just will create a lot of queues behind if there's a lot of users requesting this function there will be a lot of waiting around so this is how the synchronous will work. So how we can fix this with asynchronous, we will see it on the next functionality. So uh, we'll use the async await asynchronous is identified by this keyword, async await. So while this execution is uh, done, wait for this one and implement this one. So that's the content behind it. It will wait for the first one, the first execution, but accept the second one and do this with the uh, async await structure, it will address the, the calls of the function. So uh, the same way with async, the function are called. So the first function will be called, but it won't wait until it's executed. It will put it on the await part, the first function, and, the, and it will accept the other, the new one. So since the new one is executed in two, with two second delay, which means it will finish faster. So the first, logically, the second function, since it's only uh, passing a two second delay to execute the function, it should finish the first one. So whoever calls it the second time, because they are requesting a two second delay, they should get the response for their request faster than the three second delay. So the asking how we will make sure uh because uh, it's not waiting for the other one this is a kind of function should be able to execute to get the response for the request quickly so if we run this one you can see it both are called but the function the second function user to function re request has been answered first then this one the first the first user has been answered last uh, the, uh, the reason is because the delay value. This, this one is for three second delay, and this one is for uh, two second delay. Two second delay will be much faster during execution. So this is how as asynchronous will solve the problem. You will not wait for the others to finish. You will just accept every invoke and then await when if they are not there with the execution, but accept another function while awaiting that functionality and execute that one, whoever uh, has uh, called the function will be put to an execution or will be processed for an, ex an execution. So this is the difference between asynchronous and synchronous. It's just an easy concept. It's, you just have to know which functionality keywords you have to use to access the asynchronous functionality for your requested process, whatever algorithm you're writing. Uh, you can use this asynchronous data fetching mechanism. So this is the idea behind asynchronous. I think it's pretty easy. I think all of you will understand that, but if there's any question, you can go ahead and ask. So this is all about async await. We're not gonna waste too much time on this concept, but if you have a question again, uh, please raise your hand and then we can move to open AI concepts. So I think you already seen how you can use OpenAI with Intel on yesterday, but I'll just add some more points on it. Um, I just did a simple configuration to access my OpenAI key. Then I here, I initialized um, the module to accept user question and answers um, for the response for the user question. So here I just want to mention if you want to add new data, there is already the information that the module already knows, and it will answer you based on what it knows your question. If it doesn't know, it will say, I don't know, but it will answer based on the information it has by the pre existing print 
data sets you already been trained on. But if you have, there are informations that the model doesn't know currently. Uh, I think in 2021 or before that, if the model information is limited on those information before that, new information like LAMA index are new concept, LAMA 2, there are new technologies that come up with new information the model doesn't know. So when those information exist, there are different options that you can do for your model to be to make your model familiar, familiarize with those new concepts, with those new data that it doesn't know. Either you compose, uh, you can pass that data here as a as a parameter on your instruction. So if there's an instruction I'm telling it you are redash visualization in assistance, blah blah blah, and I'm passing it the data. So this data is about an academy. Just uh, the model doesn't know about an academy. Doesn't have the information. So let's uh, if I want the model to answer me any question regarding the Tena Academy organization, I have to pass that data so the LLM would be familiar to answer those questions. So in your case, you are passing this post press data to the LLM to answer questions. So how you will pass that data would be like this, but this now is the only option. Right now you will do this one, it's just to, for the general knowledge, there are uh, three ways how you can make your LLM familiarize with new data that the model has no knowledge of. That would be the first one, you can pass it like this. The second one, you can fine tune it, fine tune, which means you can train the model to understand that data. So you will go with another procedure to train that data with these new models by going through different steps. You will split those data, embed it, put it in vector database, uh, just there's a lot of soap and you will fine tune it. Just there's a concept that uh, named fine tuning where you will train your model so it will be familiar with it. And the other would be there is a, a retrieval augmented generation rug. Uh, it, it, this tool, fine tuning a rug, you will see them on the future projects, but I will mention them here so you can uh, have some knowledge on them. Where, where the rack is doing this is not fine tuning. Fine tuning does require many because you are accessing uh, computational, it does need computational GPUs, um, keys that are paid. So when you fine tune a new data to a module, it does require time, resource, uh, a lot of things that are costly, it does need that. But with rack, you don't need to have this computational energy to train your data, it just, you will connect your model with vector database and access that data. This vector database has the capacity to give you a similar research, which you can ask a question to that vector database and you will try and return similar search based on your question and that the right information will be passed to the model and the model will give them a final response based on the information that it gets from a vector database. So the rug would be outside the module, but still it will give you some kind of some kind of access to find the right answer for a question that the model doesn't know of. It's just uh, another concept, but there are three options for training a model about an information that it doesn't know. So for now, you will probably will use this kind of uh, way to let know the LLM there's a data that you don't know and make sure to enter those user information based on this. So you can put that data exists. So I have put this uh, sample mock data about 10 Academy for the LLM. Now this the LLM has this information. So whenever I ask a question about 10 Academy, it will understand, it will have this the access to this data and it will uh, give an answer for the user question about Tin Academy. So, so you see this, based on the information I gave it, it can start answering user question. So this is one way to do it, how you can inform and let them about information that uh, he has no any knowledge of. So this is the point that I want to show you here on this 
example. So uh, the other thing I want to mention would be, um, I will put the reference on the later tutorial link uh, presentation, but if you want to have some re memory, if the LLM, especially when you have this chat conversation with the LLM, at least for some time, the LLM should have memory about the data, about the conversation between the user so that the LLM can be more uh, responsive and interactive with the user. So, for example, if I ask, ask this question for the LLM, but if I ask another question, it won't remember the conversation I had with, with the, the module about this question. So it will be a new thing every time you ask the LLM. So not to have that when you have a chat application, the, the LLM should have a memory of that chat of the user for some time at least. So there are two types of memory in LLM, the short memory and long memory. I will uh, give you as an assignment to read up on that uh, because it's just uh, Passing too much data on the LLM is not also advisable, not because it has disadvantages, because it's costly. So if, for example, if this data is very large data, LLM will show an error saying, I have met my maximum li token limit. So uh, there is this uh, limitation that you have when you use LLM, and you will face it also on this Redash application. When you pass, all the data to the LLM, it will throw an error because the data we have given you is too big. It will throw an error, say, I have put, I have limit this the maximum token that I'm allowed to access. So it will throw an error. So to avoid that error, you have the option either to limit the data. Yeah, that's the only option that you have, or you have to uh, upgrade the module, which go, you can go to their website. They have a token limit upgrade for. Uh, for their service. But again, even if you get the last uh, upgraded uh, account for their maximum token, sometimes that might, might be too much and still it will throw that error. So it's just the option you have is gather the important data and pass it to the LLM so that error can ha cannot happen. So in the memory also, the same thing. The, the too much memory you give, the storage you put on the LLM, it can cause that error. So maybe you can limit the amount of maybe every 24 hours, every day when the user has a connection with the Redash, I mean with the LLM model, for 24 hours, the LLM can have the, uh, the memory of that conversation so it can give a smooth interaction with the user. So it's just something to, to think about. It's just the, for the chat conversation with the LLM, the LLM somehow should have the option to store that conversation between the user so it can be helpful much better. So it can improve the performance of the chat. So I'm gonna say this about the LLM thing that I want mention, and let's just go to the Redash execution with asynchronous. So there's nothing big here. It's just to say you should use on the query whatever algorithm you are putting uh, for the Redash querying visualization with LLM to use the async await because a lot of users, you are considering you are building this app for a company, you, a lot of users will access that chat. So it should contain async await, a synchronous way of handling the data so that it can have a smooth interaction with all the users. Uh, so it does the same thing as before, it outputs a this output, uh, the printout the output of this function with uh, a single week. I'm just here printing a query as a, as a sample. Just make, yeah, if we fish the right up to second without smoothly waiting, and there's no, I'm not calling it twice, but I, I've called it once. So it printed based on the asynchronous async await logic. So it's just to say you should do this kind of calling uh, when you create your algorithm for the application. Uh, now let's move on to Celery. Celery has similarity with, uh, I think, await. 
it helps you it just do it much better for in a big distributed task so it will divide those tasks <laughs> they have the same uh, functionality just salaries a tool that does it much better with a big platform it has a managed a managed thing a managing tool a managing way of handling all your tasks on your application uh, smoothly so it's, it's, you just uh, so it's, it's a tool that you will install with pimp i mean sorry pip you can install salary uh, just a simple installation then you will uh, make sure when you have a salary up you can just create a python file and add your functionality so they can be accessed all over your application so you will invoke your so you will import this salary file on your components and the management will happen here so it's just the same thing it's just the structure of how you can uh, do the salary configuration you can Search on their documentation as well. It's not. It's a simple procedure. It's just the only thing you have to know about salary is how you can structure your function on your application, so that you can access the async await concepts that salary gives with a better management. So I already installed salary, and I'm running salary on the back. I have also uh, with Docker. I have in. Um, it's, it's using it's running on the, uh, above Redis, the Redis tool. So it's running. I give it a port. I can change this one so I can run from in localhost. So uh, it's running on the box. Uh, I have two functions just to show you a sample example: the add and the multiply. So the add function runs after five seconds, and the multiply function runs after three seconds. So let's see what happens uh, when we call these two functions. So I pass uh, for the add and uh, multiply function. I import them from this configuration file here so I can access them. So I'm calling and passing a new delay to parameters. So I'm accepting X and Y right here. X and Y, so six times, the first one would be six times two, 12, the multiply, and this one should return eight. Now we only, the thing the only you're gonna see is who's gonna run fast first and who's gonna run last. So, and are we able to run them without wait, waiting for one execution or not? So let's just run it. It does the same kind of logic like as and wait. So by definition, it should, the multiply should execute first because it only needs three. It only uh, will execute after three second delay and this one after five. So this should, this one should be the first one to execute if everything is working as it should. So yeah. So you, the multiplication one first, the addition run second as it should. So this is how you configure salary to handle your functions, how they respond to users with the same logic as a simple way. And it's just a management tool for handling requests. Um, what else is there? Okay, we are gonna finish up. Okay, so, so as for, so there are some notes here that I put the difference between async await and sailor we should, you should use. So you can read them, I'll share this notebook. Ultimately, the choice between salary and async await directly depends on your specific application requirement and the nature of that you need to execute. So it depends on your requirement. Other than that, they both have similarities and uh, some difference, which I specified here. Uh, so you can just read this one. So I think there's a question, right? Maybe I heard it wrong. I heard it right. I heard everything comes out. Okay, so that is about salary. Now there's another point that I want to mention about on oh, no. okay. So if you can go back to the first example that I showed you here. 
if you can see how the output is displayed let me run it again and see how it displayed it will it it uh, displayed this output like at the same time i mean the whole output so let's just run it and see it see the, the output just printed directly so it means uh, the llm uh, the way the output is printed the llm will uh, wait until it gets the all the whole response for the user question and it will print the whole response at once so to avoid that there's another option how you can print the response for user question uh, this option is called streaming you can choose to re uh, stream the response in a more smooth way so it can feel like you are talking really to an ai that is answering you your questions more smoothly so i'm just going to show you how streaming response will look like so it's just i'm here i'm accessing the streaming parameter from the llm so i'm telling it to create to return the user response in a stream form so what will that look like we'll see here so let's just write this um, function so i'm asking it to Tell me a story about the space arranger in five lines of sentence, just to not use the key. Not with the key limits. Let's just see. I need to run this one, maybe. You see how it runs us the way the streaming does when it responds the data, it will just output the data line by line instead of waiting the whole response to come and just post or print it on the whatever platform you put it it will return the response by this way so it's more smooth so it, uh, the only thing that you have to do is you have to uh, if you go to the LLM or OpenAI in this case I'm using OpenAI there is a the documentation so option for streaming response it will give you which parameter you should include to have a streaming response. So it's just something usually on AI project, this way of uh, AI response is much preferred. So I figure you should see it also. So this is what it does. You can check the response and answer the question in a streaming way. So here, let's just conclude our uh, the tutorial. So we have seen salary. Uh, salary will enhance data queries in Redux. It's just the fact that it will just demand. It will make your uh, function management to answer user requests in a single with logic much better. So it's the management to, to handle your user response uh, users interaction with your application in a much better way you use your function with your backend APIs it will make it the management of salary will make it much better so the concept behind salary again is similar with a single weight it's just the structure of how you will do that is different so you have you can ref the salary documentation to understand that better uh, so here the advantage of this integration is to improve the performance the scalability the reliability so it will give you this advantage. So the key concepts that we have learned here would be the asynchronous programming, uh, open API API or regarding open API, we have seen how streaming responses work in open AI, how you can pass data to the LLM about data which the LLM has no information prior. Uh, we have seen on API memory how you can, especially on chat application, how you can use the advantage of uh, memory in LLA. So we have seen how the redash is connected with asynchronous in salary part. So these are the main concepts we have seen. Notes on the notebook which you, you can read up on this one okay, let's just go back to you so you can ask a question abraham you you can speak abraham 
this is a github link to access the folder i'm using right now if you want to you can access the github is it clear is there a question was that a question abraham no it was not uh, it was an accident i'm sorry please continue okay so is it uh, clear the point that i want to mention on this tutorial Maybe it says... yes it's clear yeah thank you abraham what about the rest of you Okay, thank you for those who are wrapping. Abrahman, please uh, speak, then speak. Uh, sorry, Rehmet, uh, it was breaking from my side uh, all the session. So my question is how, uh, if you can summarize this, how salary can enhance my uh, readership? Uh, did you heard me when I present on async await, or do you have maybe prior experience with asynchronous way of handling uh, data? I, I didn't get the, the idea of the asynchronous. Okay, so uh, let me, let's say there's an application where the user can access that application for I don't know for different purposes. So if you you if there are three users, let's just say that that's not the reality. There are millions of users for an application. Is on I mean, an application, a well-known application, can have millions of users. So if you have that much users, and if let's say user number one is asking the application to do something, it might be converting a PDF to a document, depending on what the application is doing. So if you don't have asynchronous await of data handling, and if user number one asks that, and if another user asks the same thing or different function for that application to do something to some task for them, if you don't have asynchronous, asynchronous await functionality, the option that you would have would be the synchronous one, which is the traditional way of doing things that is, the application will hold the second user on hold, execute the first user request first. Once it's done, it will accept the second user's request and accept, uh, execute that request. That's how the synchronous or the traditional way before asynchronous await with handling comes. That's how data were handled. So it will wait for the first request to end, then the second will be will, will be in process after that one. So the asynchronous await purpose is the opposite of that one. That is, it will accept all user requests and it will invoke the execution for all of them. So if there's some kind of delay, I'm, I'm, I, I showed the, the delay part here just to show you the difference of between the asynchronous and async, how the data is actually execute it, but just let's just forget that really. But the asynchronous await what it does, it will accept all the functions. It will put them on the await, but still accept new functions. They are coming new user requests and execute all of them simultaneously. That is what asynchronous await does. And the salary has the same concept like async await, it's just it has a better management tool. That's the only difference. But the behind, it works the same way like asynchronous await. So now uh, the main thing is, do you understand the difference between synchronous and asynchronous? What their purpose is? Rahman, can you? Uh, yeah, it's it's kind of clear now. Yeah. If the asynchronous await concept is clear, it means salary is clear. Or uh, how to use salary? You can search that it's just as different architecture of we handle it, but it's the same concept. Okay, Hi. Uh, can you recap on the OpenAI API? Uh, what, what it does in the house, how it comes in our dash, how we can 
uh, what what it does on the, on our on our the chat add-on and we'll recap on that. Okay, so if I can um, talk about directly to the project, how you can use the OpenAI, that is the one thing that you have to do now is pass the data to the LLA so that data can be, uh, fam the LLM can get familiar with that data so it can answer you that question regarding that data well. So uh, the thing that I mentioned on the tutorial is that you have to pass the data in general, Right now, you will not use a uh, rag and fine tuning options, but there are three ways how you can pass the data to the LLA. One would be the example that I just showed you on the notebook, which you can see it on the GitHub. Also, so that is passing the data as parameter on the instruction on the prompt that you're reading. This you will tell you will tell him you will tell sorry, the LLA that it's an assistant for the readers in the in this visit and you have this data, make sure to answer the user's question based on this, how you write the prompt. It's just a set of instructions, set of sentences. So the instruction is how you write it is up to you, but you will put the data as a parameter in that instruction. The LLM will understand that one and answer the user's question. That's how you will use it for your advantage in this project. As in general knowledge, there are also other options, better options to pass that data to the LLM. That is training the LLM with that data, which we call fine tuning. And the other would be RAG implementation, where you don't have to, which is much less costly than fine tuning. And it does, at the end, they all do the same purpose, just how they do it is different. So this is how you put the data for this week project. And I hope that's clear. Yes, and uh, uh, will the data uh, exceed the total uh, uh, yeah. limits? So, you, what will uh, if you pass all the data? It will happen. If it doesn't happen, it, you can to you can feed the whole data to the LLM to answer. But if that error happens when you pass the data to the LLM, uh, just cut half of maybe the data table rows and pass it until the error goes away. The other option that uh, to fix that error would be to get another key with a better token. I don't think the academy will provide that one. Uh, so at the end of the day, the concept is to just show you to know how you can do this. So you can minimize the data if that error occurs, minimize the data and pass the minimized data to the LLA. You can do that for all of you. Okay, so if that's clear, Hilary can ask. Okay, my question is uh, for for the for salary, uh, is is the purpose like to achieve concurrency so that uh, in in database that you can fetch different types of queries and also if user if there are different users on the same website but different locations querying at the same time. Uh, will self re handle that concurrent. Yes, exactly. That is what the purpose is. Okay, thank you. Okay, so uh, no more question. Is there any confusion? Okay, so if there's any question, um, we, we can end this tutorial. Can I get a last reaction from all of you? So, okay, thank you. I'm just gonna start the recanting as always, especially on the reduction installation, please, please reach out on the, I mean on the Slack.